Our lesson for December the 18th, 2016, Lesson 3, is taken from Unit 1, which is titled, The Savior Has Been Born. Our lesson title is, Great Expectations. Our devotional reading is taken from the Gospel of John, Chapter 1, verses 19 through 23, and our background scripture is from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 23, and verses 57 through 66. And our printed text is Luke, the first chapter, verses 8 through 20. And our key verse, The angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Luke chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Our lesson name as a result of experience this lesson, that the students should be able to do these things. To understand Zechariah's role in the story of the birth of John, identify with Zechariah's feeling of doubt and apprehension, and accept and fulfill the task to which God has called us. Great expectation. We have to understand that the father of John the Baptist was a priest, and he was from the lineage of Aaron, and, and his name was Zacharias. The wife of Zacharias was Elizabeth, who was also from the lineage of Aaron. We are told that they were both righteous before God. Though they were not sinless, yet they were blameless. No one could charge them with any open scandalous sin, and that they lived honestly and inoffensively. They were childish. Elizabeth was burned, and they began to despair of ever having a child because they were both getting up in the years, in age. So we find in verses 8 and 9 of our lesson where it states, And it came to pass that while he executed his priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. His lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. During the time of David, the family of Aaron was multiplied, so David divided them into 24 courses for the more regular performance of the office of, of service unto the temple and that it might never be neither neglected for lack of uh, hands or engrossed by a few who, who would take over the privilege all the time. Zacharias was of the course of a, a Bidai. His lot was to burn incense, and it failed to Zacharias' lot to burn incense morning and evening for that week of his service as other services fell to other priests by lots also. The service were directed by lot so that some might not decline or others would not overtake and be engrossed and, and they could not pick and choose that the service that they wanted to do but they service was uh, applied to them by lot. <clears throat> We have to understand that this is not the high priest burning incense on the day of atonement, but it was the burning of the daily incense at the altar of incense, which was in the temple in Jerusalem, not in the most holy place into which the high priest only entered, and that was once a year. So he was burning incense at the altar of incense. And we find in verse Ten of our lesson where it states, and the whole multitude of the people were praying with 
without at the time of incense. Said that the mother multitude of people was praying without. This was the regular time of evening prayer. And multitudes, those in Jerusalem, they would come around to to worship. Now we have to understand that the incense was a symbol of prayer. Psalms 141 verses 1 and 2 states, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear to my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening service. A prayer to God is as a sweet smelling Savior. So when we offer prayer, God is pleased with our prayers because, because that shows our dependence, our reliance, and our trust in him. And it says that when the incense was offered by the priest, a bell was rung as a signal to the people in the outer courts, to the courts without, who all engaged in prayer in deep silence. Verse 11 of our lesson says, And there appeared unto him, an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. An angel, a messenger sent from God. It had now been about 400 years since the time of Malachi and since there had been any divine revelation from God to the people of Israel. During that time, the nation was looking for the Messiah, but still with nothing more than the ancient prophecies to direct it. Now that he, the Messiah, was about to appear, God sent his messengers to announce his coming, to encourage the hearts of his people, and to prepare them to receive him. We find in verse Verses 12 and 13 of our lesson where it states, And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Fear fell upon Zacharias. But we see that the angels consoled him and let him know that his prayers has been heard. Referring not only to the frequent prayers which he had offered to God for a son and to those which he had offered for the deliverance of the consolation of Israel. We have to understand that God in in, in his own time and in his own ways answer our prayer prayers and then our faith in God is not so much as that trusting God to give us what we ask for but to have faith in him and to trust him for when he do not answer our, our prayers the way that we want want them to be answered but to have faith in him that he has our best interests at heart at, at all times. And the angel said to him that thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call him John. If our prayers are not immediately answered, they should not be considered as lost. All our prayers, all such sincere prayers are heard by God and, and will be answered in the most effectual and best way and at the best time. Answers to prayers are to re be received by faith. And what is faith? Faith is what? Believing and trusting in the God of the scripture. Faith is relies upon the God of the scriptures and receiving what he has said to us and promised to us through his son Jesus Christ. In verse 14 we find our lesson states 
and he will be a joy and delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth. Not only he will be a joy to Zacharias in gladness, not only because of, of his having a son, but because this his son would be the prophet of the highest and will go before the Lord and prepare his way and to give knowledge of salvation to many and and light to them that, that were in darkness and that many shall rejoice at his birth as the neighbors and cousins of his parents did and not only them, but all others who had knowledge of him as a prophet and as the forerunner of the Messiah. Verse 15 says that, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other firmly drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. Jesus stated in the Gospel of Luke, verses seven, I mean chapter seven, verses twenty-seven and twenty-eight, speaking of John the Baptist, he said, "This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy faith, who shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you." Among those who are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Jesus was verifying and speaking of John's greatness in very self. He also said that John was not drinking wine or a strong drink. John the Baptist was a, a Nazarite. He was dedicated unto God from birth. That that his whole life was to be influenced and directed by the Holy Spirit and that there would be nothing, no wine or a strong drink that would, would be there to hinder him from the dictation and the influence of the Holy Spirit, that, that, that his life and his purpose was to do the will of God, that, that he would be God's prophet and to be used to him and to present himself wholly as a vessel that was fit for God's service and that he would what be filled with the Holy Ghost and shall be divinely designated to this particular office. God called him to this office. Many times people, because of what they think is uh a position of glamour or prestige or fame, they choose those offices upon themselves. But we should wait. We should wait for the calling and direction of God's in our life. God has a work for each one of us to do, but we should be careful to to be prayerful and mindful and and to let God appoint those offices for us is not for us to choose those offices for ourselves. We find in verse 16 of our lesson, and it states, And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. The children of Israel, to whom only he was sent. John was sent to the nation Israel. And he came in preaching and administering the ordinance of baptism and great multitudes of them flocked out to meet him. They met him out in the Jordan, out in the wilderness, that the many of the people, they believed in his doctrine, his teaching, and submitted to his baptism. Many were converted under his ministry and confessed their sins and were baptized by him, which, which was verified by this prediction so shall he turn the Lord so shall he turn to the Lord John was to be and was an instrument of the conversion of many among the Jews by preaching the doctrine of repentance 
towards God in faith in the Messiah that was just about ready to come. John was used of God of turning many from sin and of bringing them to a true sense of it and acknowledgement of sin and from trusting to and depending upon their birth privilege. Many of them thought because that they were born to the nation of Israel that they was automatically right with God. Many of them thought of their legal duties that if they tried to keep the law that that they was righteous. So he turned them from their, from their legal duties that they thought would, would make them self-righteous. And from the gross notion of a temporal Messiah. The nation Israel was looking for the Messiah to come and to rule, to come and to deliver them from the oppression of the Roman Empire, to come and to set up the throne of David and to establish, to establish the Jews in, in a great earthly kingdom where that they would now be the head and, and their oppressors would be up under their foot. But John told them that in leading them to Christ, that he was leading them to a spiritual savior as the lamb of God that should take away the sins of the world. For we find in John 1, 29, where it states, the next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and said unto him, behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. As John was baptizing in the Jordan River, he looked up and seen Jesus coming. And John declared the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. First, the Messiah came as a lamb, as a lamb to be what? To be offered, to be offered for the sins of mankind. To date, in our Christian society, all across our so-called airways and radios and TV, people talk about blessings, material blessings. But what about the redemption? What about the, the, the propitiation, the satisfaction for mankind's sin? It, it is not about the material thing, but it is about our relationship with God. And man cannot have a relationship with a holy God until first of all that the sin that has been settled. And that sin that is only settled when an individual accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Savior that, that Jesus realizes that Jesus died for their sins. And that, and that he was buried and that he was raised the third day for, for our justifications. And then we can have a relationship with God. Not so much worried about the material things here on this earth, the, the harvest, the, uh, 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 the blessings and, 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 and wealth and money, but, but about our relationship with with God. He said, what does, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? So it is most important that first of all, we must recognize Jesus as our Savior and that he came for one purpose. God sent his son into the world to die for our sin. We find in verse 17 of our lesson where it states, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of he lies to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John did this by preaching the doctrine of repentance. Repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is having to change the attitude towards sin and God. That's what repentance is, not being sorry 
be because uh, you have to suffer the, the circumstances of your sin, but, but having a whole change of attitude, realizing that sin, sin is displeasing to God, and so our attitude, it should be that we do not want to do anything that is displeasing to God, even if it's these sins, so, so we would forsake those sins in order to please God and ask Him to help us to help us to cleanse us so so that we might live a life that is that is to do his will and not our will. And so John did this by preaching the, the doctrine of repentance and the ministry and the ordinance of baptism, which was done to awake the people expectation of the Messiah and by pointing him out to them in his preaching. John would be an instrument of turning fathers with their children and children with their fathers to the Lord, that he would be a means of converting both fathers and children and to gather persons of every age. Salvation is available not just to the senior citizens, is it extended to to the old, the middle age, the young? It is extended to extended to all mankind, and, and that we need, and that we need a very age to turn and give our life to God. That 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 through His Word, that His Word will instruct us and guide us how to live a life. He will instruct us how how that we can live a life that is pleasing. To God our Father, where where it would be our desire, our desire as as, as Jesus was our example, is that not our will be done, but that the Father will would be done in our life. And so we see in verses eighteen and twenty, eighteen through twenty of our lesson, where it states, and Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answered, saying unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believest not my word, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Because Zacharias believed not the angel's words, he was struck with dumbness. He was unable to speak. Because of the unbelief of his heart, he rejected those words. We can see just how evil unbelief is and how much God resents it. Hebrews 11.6 tells us that, but without faith it is impossible to please him, that he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And those who study the scriptures know that the angel's words came to pass. That the angel Gabriel was sent by God and that, and that Elizabeth did conceive. And that John the Baptist was born. And that he was sent before the Savior in the spirit of Elijah to, to prepare the people. And so... That's a lesson for us that God has told us in his word that that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall ever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God's word is to be trusted and unbelief is, is an offense to God. And so we as, as people we as the people of God, 
Our responsibility is to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not to lean to our own understanding. For we have to realize that we worship a God, first of all, that 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 he is omnipotent, that he is all powerful, that that he is able to do beyond what he said or promised that he would do. And and, and, and that we have a God that 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 is sufficient, that that he that he's omnipresent. He could be everywhere at the same time. And that and that he is a holy God. And that he is a holy God and that God is not a man that and he cannot lie. And so when God makes a promise to us, we have to trust him. And then we have to do with great expectation. What is the Christian's great expectation? What is that blessed hope that that we as as the saints of God are looking for? Or are we looking for material things or are we looking for deliverance from our temporal troubles and our problems or are we looking for the appearance of our great savior jesus made the promise when he went away jesus said that he was going away to prepare a place for us and that if he would go away that he would come back again that there were many mansions in his father's house and that where he is we can be also so our great expectation our blessed hope is the looking for the reappearing of our great lord and savior jesus christ so that so that we can go that that we can go and rest and forever be with the lord that that those before us who, who who had died in the Lord, that that we all would meet him in the air, and that so we can ever, forever be with the Lord. And we are told in First Thessalonians the the fourth chapter for chapter for us to comfort one another with these words. For this is our great expectation of the Lord coming back for us, his church. May God bless you and keep you.